Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided, indicating the time, the place, the meeting, the proposed agenda, which notice was posted, made available in newspapers, and filed with the clerk of the town of Clinton in accordance with section 3D of chapter 231 of the public laws of 1975. NJSA 10 colon B, 10 colon 4 8B authorizes municipalities to conduct public meetings through the use of streaming services and other online meeting platforms. Recently adopted Public Law 2020, Chapter 11 amends OPMA, Open Public Meetings Act, to clarify that in times of emergency, public bodies may vote, accept public comment, and cause a meeting to be open to the public via, via electronic means. The Town of Clinton is using Zoom video meetings, which are also live streamed to Facebook on the town's Facebook page at Clinton and JGov. Please be aware that this meeting is being recorded for the public record. Both Zoom and Facebook Live are imperfect, so if glitches pop up, please be patient. We will address all questions and general comments after the governing body has conducted business and shared reports. We will take comments during the public hearings of any ordinance on the agenda. Councilman Mike Humphrey will be moderating questions and comments on Zoom and Facebook. Please use the chat feature in Zoom to indicate that you wish to be recognized for a comment. You can also type in questions. Feel free going forward to email councilmeeting at clintonnj.gov with any questions or concerns between meetings or questions you would like answered during future council meetings. You must provide your name and address to be recognized for comment. We ask that you keep your device muted until called upon by the council. The meeting's moderator may also mute participants. Mayor and council will respond to all votes using chat. Please send me a note at jkovach at clintonnj.gov with any questions or call and te or text at 908-399-8921. Okay, I think that takes the longest part of this entire meeting. Um, I just have a couple of quick updates um, for everyone, and I apologize for the late email last night, but as many of you know, there were some issues with uh, gathering people, families, friends, kind of congregating down on the patio by the Art Museum, and also with the benches on Main Street and Lower Center Street. So. Yesterday, DPW picked up all of the benches that are movable. Uh, the ones on East Main Street, which are cement, are still there, but I don't believe we had any issues with congregating down there. And after having a conversation with Marjorie Nathanson at the Art Museum, we have uh, put barricades up all over the patio to keep people from um, being out on the patio and congregating there. So hopefully with uh, no place to sit and no place to gather. We can start to see some of that um, continue to move. And, and this is not to discourage people from being outside. Uh, absolutely, you should be outside. You should be getting your exercise. The whole point of this exercise is to keep people from uh, stopping and kind of hanging out downtown. We get that the location is beautiful and the weather is perfect. It has just made it that much harder uh, for other residents who are following the rules and for the police who are trying to maintain some sort of you know calm through this this potential chaos it's also hurting businesses so keep in mind that the longer we have to stay with a stay at home and businesses closed the longer it's going to be for our small businesses downtown which are already struggling so anything that we can do to ensure that they can reopen is is worth the sacrifice to know that we'll have a, a vibrant main street once again so please put that out there remind people um last reminder as people are walking their dogs i, I get that you know it, it's you're not you don't always have a bag with you please try and keep some bags we do have bags in a couple of locations throughout the town pick up the dog poop it's, it's disheartening when you're walking and um, hearing from other people who are walking their pets that there is a, a lot of uh, dog poop left laying around. And one last thing is obviously garbage and recycling. Last Friday, we had a windy day and there was some recycling that was seen blowing around. If you're recycling cans, dump over. Please do all you can to go back out, pick it up, and, and put the recycling back in the cans. Um, I've asked the Republic as they see it kind of floating along if they can grab it, but they're not gonna be able to pick up every single plastic bottle or piece of uh, cardboard that is kind of flying down the road. So 
the more that we all do to keep everything looking clean and neat, the better it will be in the long run for all of us. So with that, that is, I believe, all of the updates that I have. Um, yes, that is all the updates that I have. So we'll work through. Mr. Humphrey. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, I've sent you all an email, uh, which uh, will at the end of the meeting, uh, we'll do just the recording of the pieces. I'll instruct you how to do it when, when we get to that part. Um, uh, the, uh, a lot of uh, new information that went up, uh, both on the website and on Facebook. Um, so hopefully everyone's got it. The, the best thing that we can do though, uh, the way the algorithms work in Facebook and Instagram is that if you, if you like it and you comment on it, then it gets more traction. So just remember that when we do a post and you think it's important to um, share it to your own page, to make a comment on it, um, to just do something that uh, will get more traction and, and get the message out further. Um, oh, and um, I just wanted to make sure we're okay with setting up a, a second uh, Zoom account uh, with I see that some of the commissions and committees are starting to set up their meetings for April. So I wanna make sure that we have a second account so that we're not overlapping and people aren't barging into other people's meetings. Are we okay with that? That works. I think, unless anyone's got any objections to it, let's move forward with setting up that second account. All right. um, and the last thing is that, uh, um, for me is that uh, the um, uh, the the uh, um, how can I say the emergency notification system? We've gotten some signups on it, but I think this is going to we're just going to have to drive home the message for a lot of people to sign up because um, we just want to make sure we're hitting people if something else pops up, um, you know, in the future. So, and I think that's it for me. All right, thank you, Ms. Johnson. Um, so we've pushed out um, something this week to thank our healthcare heroes, hashtag healthcare heroes. So we're asking people to do um, posts around thanking all of our essential workers out there. Um, you can check out my Facebook page and Riley, Lisa, we've all kind of posted, um, you know, we've got the kids involved doing some arts and crafts of thanking um, all of those people out there who are fighting for all of us right now. Um, later this week, after that, that'll be end Wednesday, later this week, we're going to push out the Easter egg hunt. So we're going to be doing an Easter egg hunt throughout town. So we ask that the residents um, hide Easter eggs in their windows or, you know, their front porches or somewhere in the yard. Not that we can go get them because we're practicing social distancing. Um, and to um, participate for something fun through the weekend to celebrate the holiday. Um, the other thing, I have a question. Um, did we push out, I don't know if Corey's on the call, did we push out stuff to the business owners? Because we went for a walk yesterday and there were people going in and out of businesses. So I didn't know if we sent out or if Tara was working with um, Corey with that in reference to practicing social distancing. Which there businesses? Also, am I calling people out? Um, I also heard there was a line at the ice cream shop too, as well, with not practicing social distance. So I don't really know so, how to like push this home that so, yeah. we're supporting our businesses, but we cannot congregate in line and we can't have multiple people going into businesses because it kind of gets away from the curbside pickup. So that's and Corey has been down there. there. And the guys um, have been down there. Yeah, I know. And, and I uh, think the, people, unfortunately, I think what's happening is we've been in this situation for a long period of time. It has been, fortunately, it has not affected Hunterdon County or the town in an incredible way. And I think people are getting a little antsy um, and not necessarily practicing. So I just, I'm just concerned because I was like, people are going in. This was, I think this was yesterday, um, yesterday morning. Um, so 
and I did see a post just this morning about lining up at, um, I believe it was JJ's at the back window. So I don't know how to kind of hit this home. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to deter people from going to our businesses, but I also want to practice the safety of social distancing and keeping people safe. So I don't know if Corey pushed something out and I missed it or so be it. So that was my question. Tara, you, uh, you and Corey worked on, on something that he put out to all of the businesses. Um, we were trying to toe the line because we didn't want to, you know, hurt the businesses, but I know Corey and I discussed that if the current advisement telling them, you know, don't really allow people in the shops, which is why I assume people were lining up outside the ice cream store, because I believe he told them that it was too small of a space to have people inside. Yeah. Um, same thing, I believe the cheese shop, he requested that they let maybe just one person in the store at a time, and then if not, do curbside pickup. But it sounds, you know, Corey and I were talking that if it doesn't work out, he might have to mandate curbside pickup for all food establishments. That their people can't even get out of their cars or walk there, that it's gotta be curbside pickup or nothing. Right. He was, and it sounds to me like from what Megan's saying is that people just aren't listening. I, I don't wanna push this all on the businesses because obviously they can't be out there monitoring their customers every second of the day, but Sounds like we might have to go that more harsh step and tell food food businesses that they can only do curbside pickup. Right. Yeah, but, I just sent I just sent Corey a message, so um, I'll have him reach back out to you, Tara, to coordinate communication. Okay, and so that's I mean I just want to make sure the council is is okay with that. That I think we're going to have to mandate all businesses, all food businesses, curbside pickup only. Right. You know, if anyone has an issue with that, can just. I, I'm a little. I'm just a little concerned with that. I think that we're penalizing most of the businesses that are doing it right because of a few that uh, are not. I'd rather hammer down on the businesses that are not doing it right. There are really only two that are allowing uh, that where there's there's any sort of gathering, and it seems to be the two ice cream shops. All of the other restaurants are doing the curbside, um, I, I, and the coffee I, I, shops. I, 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 I picked up from Just Chill yesterday. I ordered, I stood outside, it was brought to me. So they were okay. Yeah. I, there was no right, line. Right, but you were standing, standing outside. outside. What's that? Yeah, but I called and I was walking by. I walked by, picked it up, and so I wasn't uh, driving. Um, are there restaurants who are allowing people inside still? I, my, I'm sorry, my internet connection is terrible today, so I don't know if anyone can hear me or not. So if you can't. can hear you. Can hear no, you. as far as I know, everyone is, is doing the curbside. Um, they've all moved to curbside. Oh, there she goes. We lost you. We lost oh. you, Riley. With your eyes closed. No, I think she's, uh, she's live. She's just. Can you hear me? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, my question is, are there restaurants allowing people inside the restaurant? I know last week Dominic's was having people come in. I don't know anyone else. I saw I saw multiple people go into Christie's Bakery yesterday as well. That was why concern that people were picking up, but they weren't curbside picking up. They were going in, and I saw multiple people go in. And they did pick up quickly and come out, but the whole thing is we shouldn't be congregating. We're going to offer curbside pickup. We should be doing curbside pickup. And I don't want to detect anybody to, from going to pick up food or supporting our businesses. I just am looking at the safety of our community and not getting into this lack kind of behavior of we haven't seen it hit hard here that doesn't mean it's not going to right so here's the one thing too and i'm saying the same things to anyone that's calling me about this is the minute you see it happening and and i get not wanting to be the tattletale but we have to notify corey immediately when we see it or they someone needs to call the non-emergency number so that the officers can address it He's got Matt right now going downtown. I just he just texted me, um, but he his his request is is that as you see it, if you see something, say something. Basically, 
it's got to be done when it's happening, not when it is not a day later. Um, and again, I get the, the not wanting to kind of rat out the businesses, but we're not going to be able to address it unless we can actually address it when it's happening. And hopefully what they can do is, is work with the business owner to, to kind of re, refigure out how it, how it should work. Well, give them should, some we there. should we mandate a limited number of people within an establishment at a certain point of time, like at any given time? Because that might be. has. Ah, they all have and they're not following that rule. Is that the rule that's not being followed? Pretty much. Yeah. I don't know. And or I don't the know lining up outside the store. I don't know if it's necessarily the right. business either. Like I just saw these customers just going in and I was like, oh and I had both the kids with me, so it was kind of like I don't know what to do. Um and yes, I totally should have called Corey. I was kind of like yeah. so I, no, I listen, I get it. Wait a minute, I got a question for you. How has that communication gone to the um, the restaurant owners? They have been, what Corey does is he sends either himself or one of the officers down with a the notification and a explanation directly to the business owner. Okay, but so that's only when a violation is pointed or have they gone to every single no, one that's, of No, that's on an ongoing basis. He's down there probably... I think he did it last week, twice last week, not just with the violations, but as he's seeing, you know, or as the guys are driving around and seeing, they'll stop, they'll get out, they'll, they'll have a conversation. But every um, business owner, Tara, was that last week or the week before that you guys uh, drafted the, the administrative the new order? Advisement, it, was the week, it was the week before. Yeah, it was late. I want to say it was like Thursday, the week before that we drafted the right. revised, the revised advisement about food, food establishments. Right. And it's been hand delivered multiple times to all of the business owners. And, and, and again, it's. Uh, I was going to say, I'll, I'll be honest, it's a little confusing. And yeah. I think um, we're not being crystal clear with the residents and people who are shopping about what they can and can't do. And so I think we need to get a little more clarity and put that out and say, as somebody who is going to get food, this is what you're allowed to do. Um, and be very clear about that so that people know I can't go in a shop or I can't go get more than five people in the shop at any given time or I have to stay here on the sidewalk and wait or whatever it is. So Tara, can we work uh, because on, I, um, Tara, can we work on an advisement that we can put out as um, not as the merchants, but as the purveyors of the merchants? Okay. And in terms of, I guess I'll talk to. I am unmuted. Okay. In terms of lining up outside, <laughs> sorry, I can't. At this point, I don't know if I'm muted, unmuted. I don't know what's going on. No, you're unmuted. What day you're is un it? unmuted. <laughs> you're unmuted. Um, and then I'll work with Corey, maybe it coming up with some sort of advisement about lining up outside of stores, because that to me seems like probably what's the problem is not necessarily people aren't purposefully gathering there to hang out. They're just lined up waiting for their ice cream, waiting for their food. Right. Yeah. I would say that most of the businesses are doing a really good okay. job, and I think we're being murky, like Riley was saying, and Lisa was agreeing with, of like what we can and cannot do, because like Clean Plate has a sign outside that says, this is your curbside pickup location. You know, like, it's very definitive, yeah. and it's very murky thing. Like, I saw yesterday, um, Riverside has like a a stack where you they put the coffee where in a cart and she puts it out there and then people pick it up like i think I, I think we have to be crystal clear at what the requirements are and i know it's difficult but like town restaurants doing curbside pickup no one's going in and they're delivering you know so i think we've yeah. got to it would also sorry Meg. i was gonna say it would also be great to do some sort of best practices if we can figure out what those are for the restaurants um if anything's come out janice from the state um or from the cdc 
Oh, she just left. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, if anything's come out from anyone, if there are best practices okay. that the, the restaurants could follow, if we could put that out, um, that might be helpful to people, you know, and it might push people more towards curbside, which I think is the better option. I think, you know, like Megan just said, Town Restaurant is doing an, an incredible job of keeping people moving through and, and keeping things very clean and organized. Um, as is um, Clean Plate and Stone Bean and all those those folks down on that end. I know they have a great setup going and um, Just Chill, we, we got something from there and it was very easy. Um, so if we could put out some sort of best practices, I don't know what they are, so I don't want to put something out and it not be right. So I don't know if somebody has put, you know, somebody who knows these things has put something out. Um, if I can if weigh in. From um, the league or Lisa? Yeah. It's, yeah, everything, I mean, everything that I've been reading, and these are uh, clips that I have to collect every day uh, in my communications role, um, that it's not the food that is a problem. And the transmission via food, it, it's, almost, it's almost nil. Um, what the problem is, is, is contact. It's human contact. So that's why the curbside pickup is so important. It's not, there's been multiple concerns about, you know, fear of, of it being on your produce or fear of it being in your food or if someone sneezes in your food and that you're ingesting it gastro uh, intestinally. So that's not the problem. It's really, it's being around other people. It's being in an enclosed space. So I feel that the reason we're having this hiccup um, is because all the restaurants, people that think of traditional restaurants, sit down restaurants, they had to get on board with this three weeks ago. So they are already, you know, improving on their practices and doing a great job. But I think the ancillary businesses that deal with food, you know, seen as traditional restaurants that's been the challenge and that's what this has been murky so as long as we can update this and make it known that you know curbside but maybe not walk up maybe it's curbside drive up because you're in your car and by being in your car you are you have you know you have six feet around you unless you're in a mini so um i think that might be the answer that we have to do it via car which could cut down on the walking downtown and as much as i don't want to deter walking because i'm, I'm out walking and running and biking um we are trying to avoid downtown because that seems to be the place where everybody is going if we stick to our neighborhoods perhaps or just pass through town that's one thing but um i get it the ice cream shops right now with it getting nice out it's a place it's a destination it's a place to go but when we're lining up it's defeating the purpose right. so i think maybe we have to institute the car only pickup so, um i would love to for us to think about uh, the way the supermarkets are working this uh, supermarkets are, you know, they're putting tape on the floor. They're only allowing one person in an aisle, um, you know, and d doing the, the clean thing. I, I'm not necessarily against people walking and going and get the ice cream. What I have the problem is, is like Megan first brought up that uh, they're not practicing social distancing. They're not, um, uh, if, if they're going, you know, to, to JJ Scoops, which I assume is the real main problem. Um, on, on the street, but maybe if there are enough people waiting outside, just chill. Maybe uh, temporarily that um, we ask them to put tape on the ground to say this is the amount of distance while you're waiting for your ice cream. Uh, this is the amount of distance if you're like designer dogs, you pick up, you, you grab through the window. She's, she has a, a, you know, a window in her door. So um, you go up to the, the window, but still the amount of distance um, because what I fear is that people walk downtown, but they won't be allowed to have anything because they're not in their car. Well, the problem is, though, then you're going to cut down on people being able to walk through town because now you have created lines and that people have to walk around. There's only so much space on the sidewalk. So um, thanks for doing my hair, Rory. So um, that's my concern is that it, it shop, right? You are in a space. They've limited the number of people who can be in that space and that you are waiting there and people are not trying to now walk around you because there aren't as many people there, but you have also, they're maintaining it and it's indoors. How are we maintaining these lines out outside? And is that something else? I don't know. It just, I get it. I, I don't want to detract from the businesses, but I don't, I'm not really sure how that's going to be. Uh, doable as the weather gets nicer and more people treat this as a destination and then other people also want to walk and bike through town so it kind of creates a, a pile up a bottleneck well i think that we should uh, 
honestly, uh, maybe a, a couple of people go down and we take a look at each shop and say, this is how this particular shop needs to do it. Because what I don't want to do is have a uniform code that says that, well, then that gives one restaurant or shop a uh, advantage over another just because of their physical space. What about timing? Just saying this is your delivery, this is your pickup delivery time. <laughs> 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 I like that. <laughs> oh, that's our entertainment for the morning. <laughs> um, you, you know what? Let's let me talk to Corey. Tara can talk to Corey and have him come back to us with some recommendations. Rather than us trying to kind of fix it, he's the one that truly understands it and what needs to happen. So let's see what kind of recommendations we can get back from Corey. And this way it's it's his um and, and we're not kind of directing his OEM. Okay. What, one other everyone? thing that they probably need to consider is these are, these are businesses where you like to come and peruse the wares, and I get that, um, but maybe having a sign out front or maybe something on their social the way that, that Dino's been doing, that yep. way people can kind of peruse it at home and get an idea of what they want because that's the half the experience is coming in and wandering and looking at what there is to offer. Right. Uh, but maybe if we can head that off, it, it could cut down on that. Yep, nope, fair enough. Um, anything else, Megan? No? No, uh, I just right? these long conversations, sorry. No, that, listen, these are the conversations we need to have and, and we need to be talking about it so that we can work through and, and get, to a, get out on a, on a better side um, with this. Um, Ross. Yes, on a similar note too, and I made sure that I let the uh, officers know. Uh, again, not to name call kind of thing, but uh, I know we've notified, I believe, the folks at the cigar shop before um, that they're also not supposed to be gathering. Well, they were trying to be sneaky, and they went. Uh, if you know the the yellow building to the right of it, if you go down, there's a little patio. Yeah. All kind of congregating down there in a group of about ten or so folks. Um, so hopefully we can deter those kind of activities as well uh, with that. Uh, Shade Tree is gonna be meeting uh, online. Um, historic, I haven't got a confirmation for, so Lisa, if something changes, um, I will let you know with that. Okay, uh, thanks. And then that is all. All right, sounds good. And you did notify Corey about the cigar shop? Yeah, I did call the non-emergency number. I don't have his yeah. direct cell. Oh, yeah. Sure no, the non-emergency is the best way. This way they're keeping track of it yeah. and reporting, and, and he's able to report out on it. And also, eventually, we can get reimbursed. So that's the other benefit to this. Um, he, did, he did notify me that they did break up some parties over the weekend. So groups of individuals who are gathering, it's just, you know. They're trying not to be the bad guys, but at this point in time, they have to be the bad guys about it. Right, well, especially when they've been, certain groups of folks have been notified already. I mean, yeah, you know. exactly. All right, fair enough. Uh, Ms. Karsh, you there? Do we lose I am. Can, you, can you guys hear yep. me? Gotcha. Okay, so I keep getting kicked off. So if I stop in the middle of my sentence, that's what's happened. Uh, we have multiple Zoom calls going on over here this morning. Um, uh, so I just, um, all I have to update other than what we just talked about, which I think was an important conversation is, um, that we're going to work on putting together a zoom call for the economic development committee. So we can start brainstorming, you know, what happens when we finally move out of this crisis situation and how we can help the, um, community rebuild. Um, and, you know, obviously, uh, we don't know what the be yet, but, now about what we can do in the future. Uh, the mayor and I had a call with, um, did I lose you guys? Some of you froze. Can you still no, hear me? Here. Anyway. Okay. Um, every time you freeze, I think I've gone, so I, it's hard to know. Um, a call with a company that does some, um, Janice, the words just left my brain. They Thank do you, um, um, the mapping. zoning, the overlay zone. Zone mapping. Zone mapping. Overlay zoning. Thank you. Um, <laughs> sorry. Online. So you can um, just, I know it's, I, you know, it's, I don't even know what day it is at this point. You can um, 
connect it with your GIS mapping. Yeah. We lost you for a little bit. Uh, can you hear? Me? Yep, we can. I go into detail about that because I keep getting an unstable connection. Um, but I'll, uh, we're going to follow up on that and I'll report back when I have a better connection. Um, on a serious note, um, I've gotten a lot of text messages, phone calls from other parents in the community who are looking for loopholes and reasons that they can let their parent, their kids hang out with other kids. Um, and so I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer, but I just want to say that we have over 41,000 positive cases in New Jersey, uh, over a thousand deaths, and that's very serious. And that's something that we need to reflect on and take seriously and think about the consequences of. So in Hunter County, we have over 200 positive cases. And um, I think the last report was two deaths, but I believe it's three deaths here in Hunter County. Yes. Um, and so, you know, I know everyone wants to get out and wants to get together and it's very hard to be home with your kids um, and not let them, I, there's multiple kids in these pictures right now, and not let them go out and play with other kids. Um, but there are no loopholes. There's no excuses. There's no reasons for you to let your kids out playing with other kids. Um, and I hate saying that and I hate being the bad guy and I hate telling people that when they call me and text me and say, oh, but what about if they stay six feet apart? Because right. the reality is they won't. Um, and it's a bad example for other parents and other kids. And it stinks when your kids are inside looking at other kids outside playing with other kids. So um, please stop. We're a community and we have to work together to keep each other healthy. And um, it's really important. And I'm getting emotional because it's really, really hard. And it, as a parent being stuck at home, it sucks. Um, but let me say something, Riley. I, you know, the, these, uh, you can be asymptomatic, especially if you're younger, and be a, a um, and transmit it, and that's one of the bigger problems that people are not recognizing. Right. No, that as a person who is uh, married, who is at at higher risk, um, and who has a kid who's at higher risk. Uh, I would ask that you all think about other people when you make these decisions, because it's not just about you, it's about our entire community. So we need to band together and ride this out together. And um, I think we will come out stronger and a better community. So do your best and reach out via phone, Zoom, FaceTime, Google Chat, one of the 12,000 social media networks we all have now. TikTok, I hear all the kids play with it. Um, whatever it is you can do, um, do it but please take care of each other uh, by staying away. So that's my, that's my soapbox for today. Nope, I hear you. Lisa. Hi, thank you. Um, I just wanted to update, I think everybody knows that I took off the meetings from the schedule or unpublished the meetings and other events that were on our calendar on the website through the end of the month. I did leave up Shade Tree, Historic, um, and Recreation, but um, if any of that changes, please let me know and I'll, I'll remove that. Um, also, I sent you all some suggestions, uh, protocol to follow when posting to social media um, as a way for us to uh, be more unified in our approach so that we don't end up du you know, duplicating efforts or duplicating posts or leaving out um, anybody so that we can all um, share together. So to, uh, I sent that to, to Mike and to Janice. So if you didn't get it, let me know. I'll resend it. Just I wanted you guys to eyeball it first and yep. let me know what you think about it, see if I'm missing anything. And then I'm going to send it out to the rest of council once I get a thumbs up from, from you both. Yep. Um, I, I, today. I, I didn't see it. Okay, I'll resend it. Let me write, make you. a note to myself. Um, the only other thing is today I'm hoping to finish up the um, trifold pamphlet that we're making for our seniors, many of whom are not on social media and not uh, connected via email, and so are not getting a lot of important updates um, about resources that are available to them. So we've been collecting, the communications committee collected those resources and I'm writing them up and Mike is um, working on the design of this pamphlet and also to try and get out information and get them signed up for the um, emergency uh, text and phone messaging system so that some of our most vulnerable uh, residents can be reached during an emergency. And I believe 
that's all I have. Is that what we have for you? Yes. Rich, did Sherry get on? I'm sorry? No, no okay. Sherry's not on. All right, Rich, any updates? Uh, yes, uh, so far we're business as usual. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, our shifts are still staggered for um, all the other employees. Uh, we're not focusing on new things. We're focusing on uh, old things, if you will, that are on the to-do list. Uh, but uh, even though we're reduced staff, we're still being able to provide all of the services. So at least that's the uh, status quo on our end. Okay, sounds good. Tara? Um, I will be, I'm sure that you're going to get something from Katie or Landy's board attorney, but I am working through the, the new guidance that was published about Landy's board meetings, um, providing some recommendations, but I'm sure again, you'll get something most likely from Katie, but I will touch base with her. Um, also there's been a lot coming out about, um, who's eligible for unemployment and there's a federal sup supplement. So, um, the firm is actually working on putting together a memo about that, just in case if you do have to lay off any of your staff, you can give them the full information about what they're eligible for because, um, I mean, they're making a lot more, honestly, they're just making a lot more money available to people, uh, getting rid of a lot of the exceptions, the federal supplements, so fingers crossed the town won't have to do that, but in case you have to furlough any workers, you can give them the best information you can on where they, you know, where they can keep getting paid. Perfect. All right. Sounds good. Anybody else have anything that we didn't discuss? I just had, I forgot to mention um, that I put out at the top. Uh, thanks. Uh, we're, losing, we're losing you, Riley. We'll get it. We lost you. Can you hear me? Now we can. Okay. So I put out the so people could have that out this week. sure everyone gets the information um, around town. I think it's a useful sort of um, gathering of information in one place. Um, and I'll keep doing that. So if you have things to add to it, please send it to me. It's not, you know, there's nothing um, uh, proprietary about it, let's just say. So please send me uh, things to add throughout the week and I'll, I'll keep putting it out. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, and, and I wanted to mention this. Um, if, if we are, you know, trying our best, we're putting out, we're doing a lot of things and, 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 and um, coming up with some great ideas. And the only thing I think is that uh, if, if we have an idea, shoot it over to the, the council person who's uh, in that particular committee or area. Um, just to make sure that we're coordinating all resources, you know, uh, pulling it all together. Um, yeah. You know, uh, just uh, we CC everyone, but point it towards, you know, if I've got something that's, you know, economic, I'll point it towards Riley and Rec, I'll, I'll send it to Lisa and Megan and, and Historic to Ross, you know, and all those types of things, but we'll CC everyone. So everyone is, has an idea of what's going on. Um, and that way I think we can actually move uh, faster. Sounds good. Uh, and then uh, uh, at the end of the meeting, I'll turn off the recording and I'll turn it back on. If your connection is low, then we'll, we'll do this a little bit later today. But uh, I want to go through the, um, the taping of the messages so we get um, you know, something really cool out to residents uh, later today, if that's okay with you. That works. Um, anybody have anything else? Seal said she has nothing to... Um, report on. So with that, meeting adjourned. So you want to end